Look, it's just about springtime. Everywhere I look there are flowers and bees and birds. That's pink japonica ablaze. And a buzz with bees. So pretty. More pink japonica through there, look. That's, that variety is apple blossom. Apple blossom japonica. It opens white and turns pink as it matures. Very nice japonica, that one. I grew that piece from a sucker. So out of a whole plant, I generated a sucker. I mean, out of a sucker, I generated a whole plant. That's what I mean. Isn't it lovely? It's much pinker to look at when you're up close. Now the kookaburras think it's funny. Lovely pink japonica, gorgeous. Apple blossom, just grown from a sucker into a new plant. And the fruits are edible, and as we recall, the fruits have more vitamin C than lemons. And there's a whole host of white freesias there. That's for perfume. They're from Africa, aren't they? South Africa. Lovely freesias. And just beyond the freesias are some pretty daffodils. Where are they? There they are, some daffodils. Look at them. It's one of the colours of spring, late winter. Look at that trumpet, isn't it cute? Lovely in the spring sunshine. Apricot blossoms. Apricot blossoms. Gorgeous. Lovely. Springtime. Oh, this lovely red japonica. Lovely red japonica. I can hear an intruder. Anyway, lovely red japonica, look. One of the sights of late winter, early spring. And look beside the japonica, what have we got? We've got periwinkles coming out everywhere, haven't we? Aren't they wonderful? Periwinkles, where you look. Look at that periwinkle, isn't it wonderful? Gorgeous periwinkles. Periwinkles galore. That would be a nice design for a blanket, wouldn't it? Or a towel or something. Lovely. It would be. You can see they're related to oleanders and frangipanis and things because they've got that distinct windmill, windmill or propeller type flower. Look at them, aren't they wonderful? Periwinkles. Here's a big mass of primrose jasmine. It's always wonderful in late winter and early spring. It lights up the whole place. Where are you? Look at all that yellow, all that golden primrose jasmine. Lovely stuff. Let's have a closer look. Here's another clump of primrose jasmine. I've got several all over the place. They're easy to propagate, easy to multiply. And they're quite private, they're good for making a good privacy screen. If you wanted to sunbake nude, you could uh, make a big hedge of primrose jasmine. 
Look at it, lovely stuff. You can make a sort of spire, a maze out of it too. Snail shaped maze where you walk round and round and round until you get to a secret place in the middle. That would be nice. Primrose Jasmine. Is it Mesni E or, or Menzi the, the Jasmine? What's the Latin for Jasmine? Anyway, lots of it, lots of it. Lots and lots of primrose jasmine. More than you can poke a stick at. Just so much of this stuff. Primrose jasmine everywhere. The more the merrier, I say. Lots and lots of it. It's great stuff. It's quite tough too, really. It can stand quite a dry climate. There's another big clump of primrose jasmine. Lovely stuff. You can't see through it, can you? It's completely private. It's beautiful stuff. Lovely for a windbreak and screen. Lovely for privacy, yes. Actually, a little wallaby used to be in that one. A little wallaby used to stay in there to avoid the sun, sunlight in the daylight because wallabies can go blind if they get too much light in the daytime. And it was a beautiful shelter. Look at this beautiful tree lucent. It has a perfume, it does. It has a beautiful perfume and the uh, honey-eating birds can get honey out of the flowers and it's good stock feed and it's very drought resistant. It's a wonderful, wonderful shrub. Beautiful. Beautiful tree lucerne. Beautiful lucerne tree. Isn't it wonderful? Beautiful stuff. Member of the bean pea family, isn't it? Beautiful. One of the sights of spring. That's wormwood in the foreground there. But above, that's a beautiful tree leaves, tree loosen. That's that's a loosen tree. Beautiful tree loosen. Lovely stuff. And there's a huge apricot tree covered in blooms. Apricot blossoms. Lovely and pink in the sunshine. Springtime, isn't it? It's springtime. Rustle of spring. Bustle. Bustle of spring. That lovely weed is a uh, fumitory. Fumitory it's called. Beautiful pink stuff. It's everywhere too. Isn't it lovely? Gorgeous. Gorgeous stuff. Just grows wild everywhere. Fumitory. Gorgeous. This is Cassia artemisioides. Oops, that's uh, lovely yellow Cassia artemisioides. Lovely stuff. Beautiful stuff. So yellow in the spring sunshine. Just look at it. Slightly fragrant too. Beautiful stuff. 
lovely and yellow. More pretty apricot blossoms. Pretty apricot blossoms in the sunshine. So beautiful. Well, pink oxalis. All the plants I select are usually pretty tough, pretty drought resistant to put up with the terrible heat we have here in summer. So that's a little wild oxalis, pretty pink oxalis. The more of that stuff, the merrier too, I say. Isn't it wonderful? Beautiful pink oxalis, shamrock, whatever you want to call it. Look at that, another oxalis. This is a little yellow oxalis. I think it's from South Africa. Lovely. Just a little oxalis that I've introduced everywhere here. I just pull it out and put it wherever it likes to grow. And it's golden and beautiful. And tough. It'll be back again next year. And there'll be more of them next year. Oh, look up there. Look up there above. What's up above? This is my spring walk. My unique spring walk, isn't it? Look at you. Hello. Look at you. With your yellow comb. Yellow oxalis and yellow comb on my spring walk. And there's a ring of bright water. A ring of bright water in the sunshine. Spring afternoon. Look at that, lovely whiskers. This is voyeuristic. It's invading on personal space, isn't it? Of course, of course, yes, there's cape, cape weed, cape marigold, what else is it called? Cape dandelion, everywhere, as far as the eye can see. Where is it? Grows everywhere, there it is. Lots of it, one of the sights of spring. Cape marigold, cape, dad, cape dandelion, or cape weed. Lovely stuff, but a weed, of course. Part of my spring, anyway. The tritellias that I just planted a, a few, what, a few months ago? A couple of months back. They came up and looked beautiful. What have we got here? A few fever few. Some fever few flowers still. There they are. So we've got those permanently now. They still look nice, don't they? A lot of people don't like the smell, but I don't mind it. Of their leaves, I mean. Fever few. Like a fried egg, isn't it? Look here, wild Japanese plum. Japanese plum. The silver eyes are going from one blossom to the other to get a little bit of honey out of each one. Japanese plum blossom. More white tritellias here. What, two flowers this year, two, uh, four flowers next year and so forth. So they'll multiply. They'll be gorgeous, won't they? White tritellias. 
Who can I see in my peripheral vision? Who do I see in my peripheral vision here? I can see a wattle bird in my peripheral vision. There you are. A wattle bird eating an apple. A red wattle bird eating a red apple. Look at its red wattles. Isn't it lovely? A red wattle bird eating a red apple. It's probably better than sugar syrup, just quietly. I think I shouldn't feed them sugar syrup. Look, it's eating a lovely apple with all the goodness of an apple. It's not refined sugar, is it? Is it a male or a female? These birds cost me a fortune in apples all year round. It's not really a fortune. Some people spend money at the pub, don't they? I spend it on apples. Oh, and while I'm here, while I'm here, look. Look what time of year it is again, look. It's pollen time. Edible pollen. Watch. Look. Edible pollen. Can you see the pollen? Did you catch that? Probably not. Can you see the pollen? Can you see that? Oops, don't want to get it into the lens. All that white pollen. Edible and beneficial. So that's an Aleppo pine and it's what? Pinus, Pinus halepensis from Aleppo. And yes. That pollen is edible and it comes out in spring and we've done videos about that before. Oh look at that, there we are. There's the pollen. These are lovely white Japanese plums. The silver eyes. The silver eyes certainly seem to like to go from one plum flower to another and get some nectar from them. Just suckering, the Japanese plum suckers all over the place. I don't mind. I don't mind to get lost in all those blossoms. I don't think most people would mind getting lost in there, would they? They wouldn't. Japanese plum blossom in spring. Let's go and have a look at the Fertinia, Fertinia serrata in springtime. So all the Photinia serrata is in bloom. Very tough uh, shrub. The, uh, the flowers smell like semen, human semen. A lot of people like that scent. Other people don't like it, but a lot of people do. I don't mind it. Lovely. Attracts lots of bees. Nice shrub, has little berries at a certain time. Are they red berries? I think they might be red. I'm not sure now, I think they're red. And sometimes you get a few red leaves too, like with the other sorts of photinias. I rather like them. Nice scent, very drought resistant, quite shady too. Let's have a look from way back. So there's a photinia. That's a Photinia serrata. Oops, there goes an aeroplane, noisy. But that's a Photinia serrata in the spring sunshine, giving off its semen scent and attracting lots of bees.
more little tritilias growing wild on purpose, trying to naturalise them. That'll be nice in a couple of years' time when they keep multiplying. Perfect little white stars everywhere in the lawn. Aren't they wonderful? Beautiful actually, aren't they? So lovely like a star. There's another, introduced as a wildflower, and there'll be lots more next year. And it'll be perfect and beautiful and wonderful and heavenly. It's already heavenly, but it'll be even more he heavenly, won't it? It will. Idlewise. Or is it Edelweiss rather than Idlewise? Edelweiss? I don't know. Of course it's not an Edelweiss, but it's pretty. And I want lots more of them. Visualize first and then actualize. So, it's just a matter of following the yellow daisy path. That's all it is. That's all it is a matter of. Following the yellow daisy path until you arrive where you want to arrive. Really, that's all there is to it, if you think about it. And I do, sometimes. Just follow the daisy path and you'll get there in the end, to where you want to go. Where have they gone? So that's my spring walking tour of the daisies and all the blossoms. There are probably more blossoms I haven't shown you, but, well, you can only fit in so much. See you for now.